back to Global Value. Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of NASPA, ticker symbol E. We're looking at NA today because they're one of the largest businesses in Italy. Currently, they're the fourth largest business in Italy, right behind Ferrari. NA is currently trading for $28.16 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down 3.5%. So even though they're down, they're actually outperforming the S&P 500 over this time frame. Over the last five years, NA stock price is also down 3.5% compounded annually, down 17% overall throughout this time frame. Over 10 years, their stock price is down 29% overall, down just under 5% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, NA stock price is down 43%. Their stock price has been declining at a rate of 3% compounded annually. Keep in mind that the company does pay out a pretty above average dividend yield. So right now they have about a 4.5% dividend yield and their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns. So if their average dividend yield was above 3.1%, then they would actually have a positive return to shareholders throughout this time frame. So that's something you may want to look at as well. NA has not had a lot of movement in their stock price over the last year. They're about $4 below their 52-week high and they're $8 above their 52-week low. Again, NA is one of the largest businesses in Italy. They have a 45 billion euro market cap, which is around 51 billion US dollars. For more background about the business, NA is an integrated oil and gas company that explores for, produces, and refines oil around the world. In 2021, the company produced 800 million barrels of liquids and 4.6 billion cubic feet of natural gas per day. At the end of 2021, NA held reserves of 6.6 billion barrels of oil equivalent, 49% of which are liquids. The Italian government owns a 30.1% stake in the company, and NA is placing renewable and low-carbon business in a separate entity called Plentitude, which was was listed publicly in 2022. NASPA was founded in 1953 and is headquartered in Rome, Italy. So for our fundamental analysis today, we're performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics, come to a holistic and beginning understanding of NA based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still an evolving process and it's a work in progress. It also serves as an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over their last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. NA as an integrated oil and natural gas producer will see that its returns on capital are going to fluctuate with the price of oil and the price of natural gas. It's not necessarily a surprise here is that as the price of oil went negative in 2020, the company's returns on capital were also negative. Since then, as the price of oil has rebounded, their returns on capital have become more positive and are strongly above average. In their most recent fiscal year, the company earned about a 21% return on capital. However, averaged out over this time frame, NA is earning about an 11.5% average return on capital. While those returns are solidly above average, there are a couple percentage points below that 14% benchmark we're looking for. And so this is an X to start things off here on metric number one for NA. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these will be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We also really get to see the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic had on the business business as all three of these really cratered in 2020. However, since then, they've all rebounded very strongly. And so over this five-year period, NA has grown their revenues by 74%. Their earnings have more than tripled and their free cash flows have increased by 87%. So all three of these are up here. This is a strong check on metric number two and it's our first check of the day. It's great to see that their earnings and free cash flows have grown faster than their revenues because it means that the company is experiencing some operating leverage and that their profit margins have been increasing over this period. It's also especially great to see that in all five of these years, NA was producing positive free cash flow even though they were hit so hard during 2020. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an 
an individual shareholder in the business and looking at NA on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the company. We just learned in our previous metric that their earnings have more than tripled over this time frame. And over this time frame, NA has bought back a slight amount of their shares outstanding. So they've repurchased around 3% of their shares. This is likely a good thing for long-term shareholders in the business because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that business. And so when a business buys back shares by decreasing the amount that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will increase the percentage of the business's profits that you'll be entitled to without you having to spend a dime. It's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. You'd have to dig in more to understand at what prices these buybacks were occurring. And you'd want to see how that compares to the intrinsic value of the business. And so for the most useful part of the video, you'll want to stay around until after our DCF analysis of NA in order to get an estimate of that intrinsic value. Either way though, because of their earnings growth and their share buybacks, this is a check here on metric number three. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for NA. For very similar reasons to their earnings, this is also a check on metric number four as their free cash flows have grown and they bought back their shares. In their most recent fiscal year, NA has produced $2.90 worth of free cash flow for each share that they had outstanding. And recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for NA. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor potential outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. NA ended their most recent fiscal year with about $14.4 billion worth of net debt, and they produced more than $10.4 billion of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. Over this time frame, not only has NA been cash flow positive in all five of these years, they produced $30.4 billion worth of free cash flow, which is more than double their net debt position. So this is a very strong check here on metric number five, as it looks like relative to the free cash flows that the business is producing, NA seems to be using a very reasonable amount of debt in their business. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may offer a slight risk risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of NA. So NA currently has about a $63 billion total enterprise value, and we're using their enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if NA were a private company. We learned in our last metric that the business has produced $30.4 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five years, meaning that in an average year, NA produces about $6 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $6 billion of their average free cash flow by their $63 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 9.5% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for NA. That is well above that 5% risk premium we'd ideally be looking for, and that's more than twice the yield of the 10-year treasury right now. So this is a strong check here on metric number six. Something else that's interesting that you need to be aware of is that over their last 12 months, the company has produced more free cash flow than this by quite a bit. In their most recent fiscal year, the company produced $10.4 billion worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for NA, when we divide their $10.45 billion of their most recent fiscal year's worth of free cash flow by their $63 billion total enterprise value, that gives us more than a 16.5% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that looks like that would be strongly attractive as well for NA. Keep in mind that this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security and that this is not financial advice. Just because this is a check here on metric number six doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy the business. We've got one bonus metric to measure, and then we'll want to perform a discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more solid estimate of an intrinsic value for NA. Keep in mind that even though this is our last metric, this is just one of our six metrics. And while these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. So for our bonus here, we're looking at NA's dividend profile. So NA currently pays out a 4.5% dividend yield, which is significantly above that of the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to determine whether or not their dividends are well supported by their free cash flows or their earnings, depending on the type of business. For NA, we want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. And that's been the case in four of these five years. Even though the company cut their dividends in 2020, they were not able to support these with their free cash flows. However, as the business rebounded,
grounded on the increased price in oil. NA has very easily been able to support their dividend payouts in each of the past two fiscal years. As a cyclical commodity producer in the oil and gas industry, which is known for its boom and bust cycles, their dividends will depend on the cash flows that the company is able to produce, and those are going to depend on the pricing of these commodities. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze NA, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for NA. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs, and a discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's free cash flows. Here we're starting with an average of NA's free cash flows over their last five years to give us a more normalized perspective of their free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions dating back 30 30 years to, in order to project these out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for NA. If we assume that they can grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, and then 4% annually for the 10 years out after that, if we were to then add in their tangible book value, which gives us an approximation of their tangible net worth, and we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investment in addition to his margin of safety requirements, then it looks like from today's valuations of NA that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for the company is just under $30 per share. So that's slightly above the company's current stock price. So it may be really interesting to look farther into NA here. Keep in mind a couple of caveats to this as well. One is that we would not be doubly counting their dividend yield. So 4.5% of this 15% rate of return would be coming from their dividends. Additionally, NA's business has not been the most predictable in their past. So this could also potentially be the case going forward into the future for the business. So so just because this looks potentially attractive here doesn't mean that you're going to run out and buy the business. Be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for NA, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with some of the key qualitative aspects around a potential long thesis for NA. Number one, NA's post-COVID-19 refining and marketing and gas and power segments are set to consistently deliver earnings after years of losses dragged on total performance. Number two, NA is committing 25% of its capital spending to projects which will reduce its carbon intensity and put it on a path to achieving its 2050s net zero ambition. And number three, recent discoveries of large natural gas fields endow NA with low cost growth opportunities during the next five years. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, number one, the Italian government's majority stake in NA next to the control of the board may result in less than optimal allocation of resources, especially if jobs in Italy are at stake. Number two, NA's transition to a low carbon slash renewable business could result in poor execution and capital allocation missteps, resulting in lower returns while missing out on potentially higher oil prices. And number three, NA's upstream portfolio is exposed to higher geopolitical risks than its peers, which resulted in production shutdowns and outstanding payments. These risks are likely to persist as diversification appears unlikely. So hopefully that offered a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our summary. So with NA checking the box on five of our six metrics today, it looks like NA is a very strong candidate for further research into the business. On both an average and a current basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value yields, it looks like NA may be offering a risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Based off of the free cash flow that the business produces, NA seems to employ a pretty reasonable amount of debt in their business. They've also bought back 3% of their shares, and they've strongly grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows over the last five years. While NA does earn above average returns on capital, coming in at around 11.5% in a given year. These are just a couple percentage points below that 14% benchmark we're ideally looking for. NA was able to support their dividend payouts in four of these five years, and more recently since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns have ended, the business has very easily been able to support their dividend payouts, and again, doesn't look like they're using too much debt in their business. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of NA, if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward into the future for NA, and you are ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from the business, then at today's valuations, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for the company is just below $30 per share. So that may potentially look attractive based off NA's current stock price. Again, it's worth reiterating that this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. This analysis is not financial advice, and before considering any potential investment decision, 
decision, please consult with your financial advisor. Instead, this analysis serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about NA. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the business, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand what's important and what's not important for the company going forward into the future. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of NASPA, ticker symbol E. Again, as an integrated energy business, NA is a natural natural extension of looking at other energy businesses and with the company checking five of our six metrics today and looking potentially attractive on a DCF model, and it looks like a very strong candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research. So I'm happy to make an analysis of NA today. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about NA with me and have a great day.